being a tenor in New G. Now, those of you who know New G, you know why I stress tenor. <laughs> How is that? You, you mean alto? <laughs> <laughs> tenor what? <laughs> This song is for those who struggle with the calling and the purpose God has upon your life. I encourage you to surrender all to Christ and say yes to His will. <laughs> Here's my story. Hello to each of you and welcome to another episode of Jamming with the Maestro, an inspirational gospel radio show sponsored by the Lewis Chapel Missionary Baptist Church Network. I am your host, songwriter. Recording artist and minister of music, Will Harris. We have a very exciting show for you today. But before we get into the show, go ahead and click like. And share this broadcast with someone. Watching us on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to us so that you never miss an episode of Jamming with the Maestro. All right? So we're going to jump right into our, our session today. We've got a very special guest. I'm going to introduce him a little later. But right now, I'm going to jump into our daily bread moment. Let's get a little word in this today. Daily Bread. I, I read this little Daily Bread booklet every morning, and I wanted to share something with you today. It starts with Isaiah 64 and 8. We are the clay. You are the pot. We are all the work of your hand. This is titled God's Molded Instruments. Considered one of the greatest video games ever made, Nintendo's The Legend of Zelda. Ocarina of Time has sold more than 7 million copies worldwide. It's also popularized via Ocarina, a tiny ancient potato-shaped musical instrument made of clay. The Ocarina doesn't look like much of a musical instrument. However, when it's played by blowing into its mouthpiece and covering various holes around its mishap and body, it produces a strikingly serene and hauntingly hopeful sound. The Ocarina's maker took a lump of clay applied pressure and heat to it and transformed it into an amazing musical instrument. I see a picture of God and us here. All of us have become like one who is unclean. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay. You are the pot. Do not be angry beyond measure. The prophet was saying, God, you're in charge. We're all sinful. Shape us into beautiful instruments for you. That's exactly what God does. In his mercy, he sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sin. And now he's shaping and transforming us as we walk in step with the Spirit every day. Just as the ocarina makes us breathe, breathe flows, breath flows through the instrument to produce beautiful music, God works through us, his molded instruments, to accomplish his beautiful will, to be more and more like Jesus. How can knowing that you are the recipient of God's mercy affect what you think and say and do today? How can you submit yourself to his transformation? Let's pray real quick. God, we thank you for this day, Father. God, we honor and we praise you, Father. God, we are, God, instruments, Father. We pray now that you would just use us for your glory, Father. God, those hidden talents, Father, those things that we aspire to do, Father, I pray, Father, that you would give us the power, Father. God, give us the Give us the courage to step out on faith and to do those things that you called us to do, Father. God, continue to mold and to shape us into the instruments that you will have us to be, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that is our Daily Bread moment today. I hope that you are blessed by Daily Bread today. Listen, family, we have a very special guest today in the person of the amazing maestro himself, Mr. Christopher Irvin. Christopher, how are you today? Great. How are you all? I, I'm doing very well, man. I tell you, I am so honored to have you be a part of this show. Um, it, it's going to be a fun show today. Listen, Christopher is an extraordinary choir director and singer. He is the founder and director of Christopher Urban and Abraham's Descendants, based in Charlotte, North Carolina. And he is a member of Ricky Dillard and New G. So before we jump into the interview with Chris, we're going to play his Billboard chart topping single, There's Nothing Too Hard for God. Keep it locked, stay put, you don't want to miss this amazing interview. There's Nothing Too Hard for God, Christopher Irving. Praise the Lord, everybody. Put your hands together. Stand up 
on your feet on the house. Remember, God is in control. We've been made in door. Just hold on. You be strong. It's better for you. And it's better for me. Because trouble. It don't last always. Don't last Test and trial. But remember, God is in control. We've been made endure for a night. Just hold on. You be strong. Things are. It's better for you. And it's better for me. Because trouble don't last always. One more time, think so. It's better for you. And it's better for me. Haven't heard what the Lord has in store for you. Keep your pace. Stay in the rain. Hold your head up high. Because the Lord is not. It's better for you. And it's better for me. Y'all not moving like it. 
Put your hands together if you believe things are looking better. I've heard you all sing this live as the Rhythm of Gospel Awards, I believe, in Greenville, South Carolina. But I want to start with you, Chris. Chris, tell us where you're from. How did you get your start in, in gospel music? which is about 45 minutes uh, from Charlotte. Uh, that's my father's hometown. But I was raised in Sanford, North Carolina, not too far from you all in Fayetteville. Wow. Yes, yes. So tell me, how, how did you start music? What, did you start playing piano at an early age, singing at an early age? How did that come about for you? So I started playing the drums first, actually. Um, and then, my, of course, my brother was better at it than I was. So I left the drums to him. Um, but we had a Hammond organ at my home church, which no one played. So I started tinkling. And at the age of eight, I started playing uh, Hammond organ. Um, around that time, I also started directing choirs. So I've been directing choirs since I was eight years old. And around the same time, I started playing as well. Well, so Chris, I'm learning something about you myself tonight because I've never seen you play. I always see you direct and teach the choir. I had no idea that you played. Okay, okay. Awesome, awesome. So I think yes. you are an extremely talented and gifted director, but it's the vocal presentation. Um, every time I see a choir, I've never heard a choir pronounce there's so many T's and I mean, everything is just precise and just crisp. So tell us, tell our listening audience how you develop that sound that, that the Abraham descendants produces every time you see them perform. How do you develop that? Wow, so um, I will have to go back to my collegiate career. Um, I went to North Carolina a and I, ma I majored in music. I was a part of the concert choir as well as the chamber singers. Um, I think I got that style or the, uh, the enunciation, the diction, uh, the matching of the vowels. I got all of that from my uh, musical uh, my academic background, excuse me. Um, and the last community choir that I used to sing with, uh, Reverend Dr. George Passon knew he was one of those who you had to say every phrase correctly, every word correctly. Um, I think that's where I got that critique, that criticism of, of you know, developing singers as well as creating a sound, developing a sound. I definitely got it in my collegiate career, also with the gospel choir in North Carolina AT as well. Well, I'll tell you, my pastor would be glad to hear that. He's a proud Aggie. <laughs> He's a proud Aggie. Listen, I tell, I tell my choir members all the time, you can sing. You're in the choir. You can sing. But 90% um, of it is thinking. You've got to think. You know, you've got you to learn how to phrase everything. Everybody, everybody has to take the breath at the same time. That's what phrasing is. A lot of people who are not in choirs have no idea of how challenging and difficult it, it is. You, anybody can sing. But you've got to put all of these concepts and all of these thoughts and these rules and the discipline that your director is giving you into it. You know, everybody has to take a breath at the same time. Pronounce the T just right. Don't hit the D so hard. So I love that about your choir, Abraham Descendants. They are a disciplined choir that I absolutely love. Some people may have not known this, Chris, but you are also a member of Ricky Diller and New G. Now, I'm going to tell you, the first time I heard Ricky Diller and New G's, Music. I think I was in high school, and it, I think it was every knee shall bow. I'm from Oxford, Mississippi, and so the gospel choir there, Ole Miss gospel choir, sang every knee shall bow. I was like, oh my God, who is this by? I went home that night and I discovered Ricky Diller, and I have been a fan ever since. So tell us how that experience has been for you being a tenor in New G. Now, those of you who know New G, you know why I stress tenor. <laughs> how is that for you? You mean alto? <laughs> <laughs> Tenor what? <laughs> wow. So, oh, I absolutely love Dr. Ricky Rodell Dillon. That is my one of my greatest influences. He is one who is a, a mentor. Um, he will definitely, you know, if he sees something in you, he is going to push you. He's going to encourage you. And I think that his push is what is what has caused me to continue with AD because, of course, as any director, you get discouraged. You know, you just want to give up at times. 
but every time you know i feel like giving up or you know he just may give me a call or send me a text or you know i may go to a rehearsal um so you know my experience with new g has been uh life-changing it's life-changing as a director and life-changing as a singer because um like i said ricky dillard is the epitome of mentor he's the epitome of father figure when it comes to music industry um and even uh, as a choir master um he is definitely he's just that guy love him dearly get ready to say he is the epitome of a real choir master and i mean I, i've always enjoyed his music and what it is that he brings you know i've always known him over the years to to just real have real strong vocals but what i really begin to appreciate ricky is when he started um adding elements of classical kind of pieces into his repertoire for example let there be peace on earth and doxology and those types of songs i said oh yeah he is the real real deal so, wow, shout out to Ricky Diller. I know you all have a new album you ready to come out. I believe your single is coming out very, very soon. So I'm excited to hear yes. that single coming out. I have no clue. I have no clue when it's coming out. It has already hit radio. And um, you know, I I think it was iHeartRadio last week that uh, it did a debut. And you can hear all of the tenors singing alto on that new single. I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait. Listen. Listen, Chris, I want to um, talk a little bit with you about artist versus minister music, you know, because you and I kind of do the same thing. I'm full-time minister music here. You're minister music at, at a church in Charlotte, but you're also an artist. And so I want to know, how do you balance the two? Are there any challenges with, with balancing the two? What I discovered is sometimes what I would require as an artist, I cannot require, or, or sometimes I feel uncomfortable with requiring that from the minister music perspective. If I take my church choir out somewhere and the sound isn't quite right, um, I don't have a contract as I do as an artist. Where in my artistry contract, it says this sound better be right. or well, I can't say. <laughs> but I want to know, how, how do you balance the two? Are there any challenges with balancing the two uh, artists and minister music? Um, I think the biggest challenge is understanding the difference between the two. Um, I, my cousin, Dr. Tony, Tony McNeil actually, uh, gave me a good talking to a couple of years back when, um, I, you know, voiced some issues that I was experiencing at the church that I was at at the time. Um, and there is a difference between the volunteer and the person who has committed to traveling and singing in a community choir. There's two different, uh, there are two different perspectives when, uh, you you have a volunteer and then someone who is potentially, um, you know, a community choir member. You can't require the same type of things out of them. You can't require, you know, your sound to be a certain way because in, in many instances, people are just coming to the church choir just because they like to sing versus you auditioning in a, a group of people. So I would never have a Great Amount Mariah's Mass Choir uh, any type of equivalent to uh abraham's descendants only because it's two different it's two different sounds two different looks uh two different demographics is the um, training the same though the training is similar i'm not as aggressive okay. with uh, my church choir because i have a lot of older people so i have more so of a singer-ish kind of church choir versus you know, 21 through 40. Um, so of course, a lot of the energy, I'm not doing a lot of the energetic stuff, uh, but as it, as far as it pertains to vocal technique, they do get the same vocal technique. It's just not as aggressive. Gotcha, gotcha. Chris, Chris, I, I love it. I think that is a good point. I think, I, I hope our listening audience is getting that. A lot of times we as choir directors, we, we expect so much from our choir members, but they are just volunteers who love to sing. And it is our job to help cultivate and, and help them uh, be the best they can be versus our community choirs. Most of our community choirs, 90% of them are audition. So that, that makes a huge difference. Real quick, I want to go to one of my favorite songs by you. Um, my Millennium Choir did it here a few years ago. I think the lyrics are so powerful and they have really spoken to me over the years because I've been doing this thing for a long, long time. And sometimes you don't see success right away. This song is called The Process. 
And I, I just can't wait for our listening audience to hear it. So listen to it, The Process by Christopher Merlin and Abraham's Decision. Listen, I want to talk to you about how you, you're just, 
multi-talented, you're doing so much. How do you manage it all? You, your work, your artistry, your engagements. Um, I, I saw today that you have a new vocal spray out um, that I actually ordered today. I praise the Lord, so I am excited to try it out when it comes. Tell me all of the things, that, and you're also working with Urban's Pew right now. Tell me how you balance all of that and manage it all, Chris. A lot of communication. Um, between, you know, all the things I'm in, involved in, uh, as well as having a whiteboard, a dry waste board, because oh, wow. <laughs> trying to keep everything up here is never, is never good. So I have, a, I actually have a whiteboard over there with a whole lot of things that um, uh, directors and any type of, um, you know, deadlines that I may have. So Yes, I keep a whiteboard uh, with all of my stuff. As I think of it, I just jot it down. Um, and it just keeps me organized. Well, you know, uh, but I'm yes, to excited for you. You are on the move. You are an inspiration to so many of us. Um, thank you for all you do and all you contribute contribute to the gospel community. Tell us a little bit about this new product that came out today. It's right here. I said, let me bring it on the camera. <laughs> So it's vocal remedy. I call it vocal remedy uh, because a lot of people and a lot of singers, we overuse our voice and then we expect some type of magic potion to um, to restore our vocals. But this is not, you know, this is not that product. Um, it's something kind of easy and light, um, not as harsh as some of my competitors uh, that would potentially dry you out. Uh, but it's all natural, no menthol in it whatsoever. Nothing really harsh or you know harsh tasting. It has a very pleasant minty taste to it, um, and, and that's basically all I can give you without you. Without you. Oh, I'm assuming it. there's honey in it. Yes, there is honey in it. Yes, honey, ginger, uh, glycerin, aloe vera, uh, mint, and yeah. So Chris, you spray, you spray your you spray your throat with this vocal solution. Is that how it works? You yes, spray. two two to three times at the back of the throat, and you'll be good. You'll be good. I'm excited to get mine in the mail now, y'all. If I lose my vocal cords, I'm coming for. I'm just teasing, Chris. <laughs> I'm excited to try it out, man. So I want to ask you this because your style is so unique. I brought the choir. I brought your choir to my birthday celebration a few years ago. Oh, you all blew me away. I want to know who inspires you. How do you, you know, who do you draw from? Who inspires you? You mentioned Ricky earlier. Are there any other artists? Yes. So there are several artists. Um, Ricky is definitely top, one of the top three. Um, one of my gospel choir director at North Carolina AET, uh, Dr. We call him Professor, Professor Ron Jones. Uh, he was a great, he's still a great inspiration um, in songwriting and especially his technique as well. Um, and then you have, you know, my, I call it my friends. So I don't really, you know, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fan out, if you will. Uh, but uh, Patrick Riddick is one of my great inspirations. He has always been, well, has been an inspiration for 10 plus years. Uh, we, we've been friends for a long time. Um, one of my newer friends, Meacham Clark, he's a great guy. He is a minister of music uh, at Bethel uh, Baptist in Jacksonville. Like, he has a choir uh, called Company. So he's a great influence. Um, your influence, <laughs> I love your writing. Your writing is impeccable. We'll talk about that uh, for my next yeah. record. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk offline about that. <laughs> Yeah, but, but, you're, but you are very well connected. I'm very familiar with all of those people. Amazing. You mentioned earlier Dr. Tony McNeil. He's a great friend of mine as well. And Tony is actually responsible for me being employed where I am now here at Lewis Chapel. Tony had a website that connected ministers of music and churches together back in the day. And that's how I learned of the Lewis Chapel. Um, but yeah, I, I, Tony, yeah, if you don't know Tony McNeil, you need to go to social media, check him out. He is well connected, so diverse, and so well educated in the worship sector. So, um, Chris, you know, I, I'm just thankful to know you, brother. I really, really am. So, I want to say you can find Christopher Urban's music on all digital music platforms. Um, 
you know, his music is amazing. Check him out. Uh, again, this show is sponsored by the Lewis Chapel Baptist Church Network. And here at Lewis Chapel, we are unapologetically Christian, and we believe that you belong here. This wraps up our show today. Thank you so much for tuning in to Jamming with the Maestro. We look forward to seeing you next week. For you, O Lord, have been a shield for us. God, we thank you for being the lifter of our heads. Come on, let's sing it, friends. Ooh.